The first speaker today is Erika Rodan, and the title of her talk, the talk is The Fundamental Group of Two-Dimensional Random Cubical Complexes. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Henry. Uh, thank you very much for um, the opportunity for speaking here. I'm going to share my um, screen. And uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, as well. To, thank you to everyone who is uh, here in the talk. Okay. So if everyone is looking at my slides, I'm going to start. Yeah. So uh, as, as you mentioned, the, the talk is the fundamental group of random two-dimensional cubical complexes. Um, and it's, um, you can, uh, people who work, in, who work in simplicial complexes know uh, similar work on uh, two-dimensional simplicial complexes. That's the linear Mashulam. Uh, model and then the linear measurement while the, the generalization. Okay, so um, just want to mention that this is joint work with uh, Matthew Kale and Elliot Paquette. Uh, this is uh, we posted in archive on January this uh, year. And uh, yes, that I'm uh, very grateful to the European Union Horizons 2020 for uh, the fellowship that I have right now that is supporting me. Okay. So uh, let me start. I wanted to to start putting the talk in a nutshell so that uh, if someone has to run, uh, have the feeling of what was uh, what was, is it about. Um, so you 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 start taking the complete was skeleton of the d-dimensional cube. Later I'm gonna define things uh, more carefully, and then you add each two-dimensional square face uh, independent and uh, identically distributed Bernoulli P. So you, you select a probability P for each 2D phase, and then you put it with that probability. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is the analog to linear Mashulam model. So in stochastic topology, we're interested in thresholds, and uh, the interesting threshold that we, we work on is uh, when uh, the fundamental group uh, is trivial or not. And uh, we were able to prove at a short threshold that if P is um, bigger than one half, then with high probability, the fundamental group is trivial. If P is less or equal than one half, then with high probability, high one is not trivial. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, making a lot of comparison with the simplicial complexes, but um, in simplicial complexes, this is known for um, homology and, and, and as well. Uh, fundamental group, it, it's very different uh, flavor. There you have a probability as function of n, and uh, here we have a very, very different behavior on um, cubical complexes. Now, uh, we also study a little bit more what happens below the threshold one half. So if p is bigger than uh, one minus one half uh, to the one half, we're gonna see some approximation later. Uh, then pi one is only uh, three copies of C and copies one and copies. This n is gonna uh, depend on the isolated edges, meaning isolated uh, one isolated edges. It's gonna be when you don't have two faces uh, that are incident to it, and and then um, also if you choose your favorite um, finitely represented. Uh, finally uh, presented group or generated group, then we can give you a threshold in such a way that if P is less than that threshold, then with high probability, uh, then G is a free factor of uh, pi one. Okay, and then uh, other interesting things that we found out is a way of characterizing uh, structures that are uh, pure two-dimensional um, uh, cubical complexes. Um, strongly connected and for example if you give me the torus then I can tell you that if p is between 0 and 0 0.02 actually approximated um, then you're gonna find for sure a copy of the torus there that is respected and then th that is not um, uh, as, as part of, of, of a1 and then if p is less than 0 0.017 you're gonna find projective plane and if p is less than 0 0.012 you're gonna have you're gonna find with high probability uh, as the dimension goes to infinity all of these uh, at plane bottom. Uh -huh. uh, okay so I'm gonna go in, into more details uh, to each one of these things and uh, also we have a very nice conjecture that is if p is bigger than 
0.017, then uh, with high probability, the fundamental group um, is torsion free. Okay, so this was the talk in a nutshell. Now let's go to some details. Um, so the n-dimensional cube, we're gonna represent it with QN. Uh, and you can think of it if you want to geometrically as uh, the interval zero one cross with itself n times. Um, or you can think of it uh, combinatorially as entry zeros and one. So the zero dimensional skeleton is uh, vectors with zeros and one and vectors if we are in the n dimensional cube. And then uh, we represent the k skeleton of uh, the n dimensional cube as uh, cube k. And so, for example, if zero dimensional skeleton of, of uh, dimension two is all the vertices of the square, and then the one dimensional faces, of course, union the zero skeleton is the one dimensional skeleton of, of the square, and then all together, including the 2D face, is the two skeleton. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, just some notation uh, anytime that we have, we have a two phase, uh, we have a four edge cycle that has its boundary, and vice versa, every four, four edge cycle has a two phase, and we're gonna be on that okay um, so okay let, let's see what happens when we have no two phases when we have no two phases of course pi one uh, pi one is is non is non-trivial and but but then how many uh, generators it has well you take the edges of of the graph y um, and then you subtract the vertices you add one and then you know um, what is the number of independent generators of the fundamental group of, of the uh, skeleton? Huh? No two phases. Okay. And how do we know? Well, because the total number of, um, well, uh, we know this because of this formula that we have here, uh, and we can compare that with the total number of four edges that is much bigger, right? Okay. So, uh, this is if you don't have any two phase. Uh, well, this is just a little bit more detail. I'm going to skip that. If you don't have any two phase, uh, this is pi one. And of course, if you have all the two phases, then this is what happens. It vanishes. Huh? Okay. So, but what happens in the middle? Well, in the middle, we want to answer these with uh, using stochastic topology. So we want to um, include each two phase with probability p and then to be able to say uh, and with high probability when the dimension goes to infinity, what is gonna happen with uh, pi one between these two extreme cases. Okay, so um, the, the definition of, of the space is, um, as we mentioned, we take, this is, this is the notation that we're gonna have, and then we take the one skeleton and we add each two phase with independently with probability p. And the main theorem is, as I mentioned, that the threshold is one half. Um, okay, so let's um, let's see what happens back at the scene. Uh, this is not a very in the paper has not a lot of space, but I want to mention how it started. The, the result that we were looking for proving at the beginning, but then that we um, we come to realization that we could actually push all the way down to one half. So we started uh, trying to prove that if p is bigger than one half to the one fourth, that is around 0.840, um, um, then pi y vanishes. Mm -hmm. And why we were selecting that p as the threshold were um the point is that if we have uh, a cube when we have two four edge cycles that are part of that cube and that are parallel so that is a relationship and in such a way that the other four faces are included then we have another relationship that we define uh, between them uh, because then there are edge edge, edge path connect uh, in, in the same edge edge uh, path component uh, and then of course uh, for example pi one here is only one instead of two uh -huh. so what uh, what this relation allows us is to find ways of uh, simplify um, the structure by 
well, I don't know, topologists, more topologists uh, in the geometric setting could say um, deformation retract this or just say that they are in the same path component. Okay, so, and here is an example of when uh, we couldn't do that. Uh, we, we don't have this relationship if we don't have the four phases of the, of the cube. Okay, um, so, yes. The, the, the main construction that we do with this is uh, that we can construct a graph where the vertices are all the four edge cycles. For each four edge cycle, we put a vertex and then we put an edge between these four edge cycles if they have both relationships, if they are parallel in a cube uh, existing uh, inside of the n-dimensional cube and if they are uh, edge uh, in the same uh, edge path component. Okay. Um, so let's 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 construct a graph for some examples. So here in this example, we have per each four phase a vertex. Now, if the phase is uh, included, we color it. Uh -huh. So A, B, C is colored, and then these four cycles are not present, so they are not colored. And that's it. No one is connected. There are no edges because, for example, the the cube that has this and this one doesn't have the other four phases and etc. So this is the graph that we got for this cube. And in the same way, we have this graph for this cube. And uh, for example, this is the graph of this cube. As, and as you can see, all the vertices here are uh, included, uh, are colored except the phase D that is not colored. But um, we can see immediately that it is in a connected component of the graph, uh, of this graph, that has at least one colored cube, right? That means that um, actually this is not gonna be giving any, any element in pi one. Huh? Okay, so in this case, it is exactly zero. In this case, we know that we have an upper bound given by the number of components that have no colored vertex, and here we have three of those. Okay, perfect. Uh, but it, it is an, an upper uh, an upper bound. It is not like for sure. Okay. And so uh, what we get in general in the n-dimensional case is we have entries to components, um, and each one of these entries to components, it's actually um, it's actually a cube. It's actually a graph of the uh, the one skeleton of the n minus two dimension. And um, not only that, uh, this is a random graph, and um, we're gonna see what are the properties of this random graph, let me show you. So uh, each edge is included independently with probability P star, where P star is P to the four, of course, because we have the four phases that we have to have included, and each vertex is colored independently with probability P, because each vertex is colored if the if the four cycle has a two phase added and we um, and in the model we add each two phase with probability one half so um okay this means that we have a, a out of that we have a lemma that is if p is bigger than uh one half to the one four then each one of the i components that we have uh, is connected mm -hmm. and how how could we prove this lemma well we actually have a version of the Erdos, uh, Erdos Rengi graph uh, for the cubical case, and that is the Burton Erdos Spencer graph. Um, and it is in the one dimensional skeleton of the n cube. Uh, so if we have um, the model of this random graph of, on the uh, one dimensional skeleton of the n cube, we have the threshold that if p, is, uh, p star is less than one half, then uh, at, with high probability, the graph is going to be uh, not connected, and then below or equal, above or equal to one half, uh, it's going to be connected. Okay, so then because we're, we have uh, p star here equals p, p to the fourth, and we ask p to be bigger than one half to the one fourth, and we're elevating to, to the power of four, then we get the result out of that. Okay. That is for one component. The problem is that the components, these components are not independent, but then um, we can do, we can ask for what is the probability of 
all of them to be um, to be connected. But that is actually not the road that we follow. So this is the only thing that that has to be proved. Uh, but we actually went to to the to the one half threshold. And um, so let me let me tell you what is the algorithm that is behind the proof that we were able to show. So the thing is that if we are uh, if we are below one half, we know that these graphs that we have constructed from the four cycles are not going to be connected, right? So uh, that means that uh, potentially we can have a, a component that is not going to be tolerated, and then this is going to make pi one uh, non-trivial. Okay, so we need to deal with that, and for that uh, we 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 generated a parallel homotopy algorithm that is going to do this process of generating the graph uh, more than once. So in stage zero, we build uh, the graph of parallel four cycles, four edge cycles. Okay. Then we spread the coloring in, in each component, meaning if uh, we, we color all the vertices in, in each one of the components, if there exists at least one uh, vertex that is colored. Uh -huh. And then, um, we include again in, now we go to q again and we include the two faces uh corresponding to the four edges colored in one so we have you can think of this as having new two faces and then we can repeat we can construct again the graph of parallel four edge cycles and then spread the coloring of the vertices and see if this process ends with all the graph colored once all the graph is colored, we know that pi one is for sure uh, trivial. Well, uh, the beautiful uh, result that we found is that actually, with high probability, as n goes to infinity, it is enough to, to do these uh, three times three iterations. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the the proof of the next theorem, but the next theorem is. Uh, what happens below one half, and what happens is that you have is uh, you have isolated edges with high probability, and uh, the proof of this is a story that you can find repeated several times in the probabilistic method. Um, so I'm going to skip it, but basically is uh, you prove that the expectation uh, is bigger than zero when you go to infinity, and the second moment argument, and then you get the result of the theorem. Mm, now we also found uh, we also characterize uh, so we also characterize what happens between around 0.28 and well actually all the way to one that is u only pi one is only copies of c uh, and each one of those is uh, generated by isolated edges in q. Okay, so basically uh, the only thing that you have here is or it's fact with high probability, you will only have uh, uh, isolated edges that are generating um, elements in, in pi one. Okay, so, um, but there is another question that you could ask, what if I want to be sure to have some particular structure created with 2D faces? And then an example of this could be, for example, um, a, a torus, right? So. And uh, this is the minimum structure with two phases that can generate torus. It is in the 4D cube. So if you can see, we have here uh, the torus. And then uh, if we want to have this, this uh, 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 a copy of it, what we are going to do is, OK, so let's count the number of edges that we want to preserve in terms of we don't want other two edges to, to be adjacent so that um, uh, we don't well, we don't uh, kill or this this structure in pi one, and then uh, we found that if p is between zero one minus one half to the one over two two fifths, and then this is very important because it's related to the number of edges in the structure. Um, then, uh, with high probability, pi one of q, when q is of course one element of a probability um, of the pro of the probability model that we are starting has a Z-C factor with high probability. Uh -huh. So this is a little bit different in terms of is from zero all the way to the thresholds. And uh, last but not least, very beautiful, and this is an ongoing work with uh, Dejan Knopf, 
uh, that we're analyzing uh, these kind of structures in low dimensional cubes. Uh, the projective plane, uh, this is a structure that gives you a projective plane and uh, it has uh, 40 edges. So if P is uh, between zero and one minus one half to the one over 40, here is where the number of edges uh, comes. Um, then for sure, uh, C mod uh, 2Z is gonna be a free factor of pi one with hyperability. And actually we conjecture that uh, if P is above this uh, value, there is no torsion with hyperability. We think this is the actual threshold for uh, torsion, and uh, here I stop. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Um, so now I would ask everyone if you could uh, unmute yourself so that uh, we clap for Erica before we get to questions. Okay, so time for questions. Yeah, so remember you have to unmute yourself uh, in order to ask questions. Erica, let me start with the question. So the, um, the thresholds for low P that you gave, where you have um, as one sum and the fundamental group of the torus or the projective plane, um, That'll, is it correct to say that'll work for any structure that you can build with a few number of cubes, regardless of whether it's a manifold or not? Um, yes, whenever you, have, you want to. So, so the point is that we are forcing to isolate whatever you want from other two phases to come to interact mm -hmm. with the structure. Um, but uh, yes, and actually this can be, of course, generalized to higher dimensions as the linear measurement model as well. I see, I see. Very nice, yeah. thanks. But yeah, then uh, so uh, yeah, that brings me to my question about, well, so it's kind of boring about generalization of, to, to higher dimensions. Um, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, obviously, yeah, it's an easy question to ask. Have you thought about it at all? Do you expect similar things to hold in terms of it being the sharp threshold between the vanishing of pi k? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it has to be one half as well, and uh, exactly the same, um, the same, well, of, of course, that the, in, in the proof of the algorithm, uh, you're going to perhaps need to uh, go farther in terms of how many times you iterate the algorithm. But it, right? it, sh it sh still should terminate in the, yeah, it's a finite number of steps, it, it will still terminate. Finite number of steps. Uh, th th this is, uh, yeah, this, this is something that uh, should be able to be generalized following exactly the same techniques. Uh, just being careful about um, dealing with uh, combinatorics correctly and checking how many times you need to run the algorithm such that you can do these audit deformations to kill the high dimensional uh, bubbles that we want to kill, right? Yeah. So, yeah, because uh, actually what's going on is uh, this is the structure that we decided to use to make uh, two four cycles uh, to be to, to, to prove that two four cycles are uh, in the same um, in the same edge component, right? And are so, you intending to share your screen right now? Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, we can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. So let me share it. Um, thanks. Yes, so now you can see it, yeah? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah now. No. Yeah, okay, so, so this is a structure that we decided to use to generate uh, actually uh, upper bounds, right? We're generating upper bounds for pi one because uh, we use only this structure. We don't use the structure speakers and this to prove that these four cycles are, um, are actually related as we, as we define in the graph. But then you can imagine the same thing. You can imagine having instead of, of four cycles, you can imagine having then um, the complete cube that is giving you uh, a sphere, right? Yeah, and then, then you remove antipodal faces or something like that. And exactly, and then yeah, you, yeah. For, every, for every two spheres that you have uh, built by, by, by the unitary cubes, 
you have only one uh, hypercube that contains both as parallel for three cubes, and then uh, you construct the same graph. Um, it's exactly the same. Structure. Okay. So uh, another another kind of boring generalization question. What about for cliques? So if you fill up um, the hypercubes in as as much as possible, so mm -hmm. take the yeah take hypercube randomly select edges and then fill mm -hmm. it up as much as you can. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so you're generalizing. Take, take yeah, the flag. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, take take the flag, but obviously where you yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm. I'm. I think no one has studied the, the flag uh, cubical model. Yep. Um, this is something that actually we we're intending to to, to work at some point. Uh, but then, if you are interested, uh, let's let's talk about it because I think it's going to be very interesting. And um, at some point, even these kind of algorithms could give uh, apply. Imagine that we apply it for each each dimension. And then we get some kind of upper bounds for each pi k, uh, because then we can ignore the higher dimensional basis if we are dealing with some particular dimension. Yeah, yeah this also is nice because it has quite a low vertex degree and stuff, right? Compared to normal random simple complexes, so how somehow yeah. it's much more sparse and I don't know. In terms of like expansion and things like that, this is kind of a nicer expander because it somehow smaller as well. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's super, super sparse that's why i think we we don't have uh, the probability to change it with respect to n yeah 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 because degree is very small yeah wonderful thank you <laughs> yeah thanks for the questions okay i uh, thank you erica so it